So it's been a hundred years since Freud wrote the first paper on narcissism, or the first one in psychoanalysis. And uh, we've learned a lot. But people use the term and they generally think of someone whose ego is uh, immense. But once you dig down a little deeper, the picture changes quite a lot. So there's a rise in narcissism, generally, in our society. And that is a social trend. The tendency to be grandiose, to feel special, to feel entitled, to exploit others. The rise of narcissistic traits is different from the rise of narcissistic pathology. Narcissistic pathology starts very, very early. There is some kind of trauma, what we call cumulative trauma, which is those subtle mismatches and misattunement of the parent, or gross neglect or abuse. And it can be sexual molestation, it can be physical uh, beatings of one sort or another, inattention. Some are lucky, some have a father who's okay, or even a sibling who's okay, or friends who are okay, but if they can't find that, then they turn to themselves and they start to stimulate themselves to keep alive. They form a kind of premature self-sufficiency and capacity to regulate the self and rely on the self. They have an internalized image of the parent that enables them to tolerate separation and tolerate aloneness. We all have a vision of what we aspire to, and that becomes the core of the self. And they often are preoccupied with grandiose fantasies about themselves, and that will replace peer relationships. The whole life becomes an escape from feeling real, starting with a totally deflated person who might present as depressed or bored or not knowing what they want to do. To the other extreme, they keep running all the time and looking for things. If they stop moving, they're afraid they're going to die, but that's generally not in awareness. They talk about being bored if they stop moving. It really goes much deeper than that. When I was consulting to some psychiatrists at the Air Force years ago, how do we prevent severely narcissistic and psychopathic or antisocial people from becoming generals? We've seen a lot of political leaders that seem to have some of these elements, so people are, uh, are worried. If your world is filled with people who are all nasty and out to get you, you might as well kill yourself and kill the other person at the same time. And I think people don't take into account enough what a prison the grandiosity can be for somebody, how it keeps them from being able to love. Direct confrontation with the patient's grandiosity. It, it's absolutely uh, useless clinically. Tell a depressed person uh, that actually their objective situation is pretty good. It makes them feel worse because they feel you don't understand them, which is true, you don't understand them. You can't help a narcissistic person who's suffering if you can't find your own narcissistic needs. Seeing, yeah, I, I can remember when I've acted that way and what was happening in me when I acted that way. It's the same phenomenon I can find in myself. You have to actually enter into the person's world and be with them and feel with them what it's like to feel what they're feeling. And that is the beginning of building some kind of trust to be available. And eventually, you know, after a long time, you might be in a position where you can dare to say, you know, sometimes you really feel very lonely, don't you? We have to learn how to talk to each other to survive, if we're going to survive. <laughs>